walk into victory because that's what Jesus promised us. And we are going to trust God that he's going to move in a mighty way. And so on this cast, even though I'm not really, I'm not talking about healing, um, I'm, I want you to um, put your faith out if you are battling with anything. And if in any ill health, I believe God is going to touch you in a mighty way. So, and then please let us know if Jesus heals you, because I release the anointing and healing upon uh, this audience right now. Then secondly, I want to ask you to stay tuned, because I, I believe I'm going to give you a real insight how, into how God thinks and how that impacts your life. So many people don't understand why we were made, and God, I'm going to speak to you about that, and I think it's going to open the Bible for you and see how your life can be transformed once you understand how God thinks. Now, the big question that, uh, that, that we, we all wonder about at some point is, why were you created? Why were you created? And um, it's a follow-up. I'm, I'm preaching a follow-up message to um, You Look Like God. Um, that was delayed because my father passed away. And then I was going to preach this just before Christmas, or just after Christmas, and I couldn't preach this because of COVID. I got COVID. I'm completely well. Thank the Lord. But I want you to know that Satan doesn't like this message, so stay tuned. Now, the, 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 the foundational scripture and why we, are, um, why we were made is this. Then God said, let us make a man, someone like ourselves, to be the master of all the life upon the earth and in the skies and in, and in the seas. So the reason why you were made, and the old King James translation said, in the image of God was this, is to be the master of all life upon the earth and in the skies and in the seas. Basically, God was interested in you as a manager. Now, I preached this before, and I'm going to quickly run through what I said so that we can build on this, because I believe this is an important message. First of all, God made us in his own Im image, and we are made to take care of and manage the earth. God wants to partner with, with us to look after the earth and fulfill his commands and, and his will. This management role wasn't removed because of Adam's sins. God wants to partner with us in all that we do. So God takes your role as a manager very seriously. He didn't change your job description. You were made to manage, and it still remains. You are a manager on behalf of God. That's why he made you. And until you grasp that, you are, you're not going to understand what to do and how to relate to God. As I'm going to show you, in the parab there's parables that open up if you understand this principle. So God takes your, your management role extremely seriously. A lot of traditionally they've said you were made to glorify God, and yes, we must glorify God. But ultimately, God made you to be a manager or a steward. Now, um, this is so interesting to me, and I quoted the scripture last time, Genesis 2, 4 to 5, which says, when God made the earth and the heavens, neither plant, wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. So what happens is, is that God was, wasn't willing to send growth until there was management. God wasn't willing to send growth to the earth until his appointed manager had been there or had, been, had arrived to, to, to manage that growth. That's a really important principle for your life. Um, and this is, there, there's, there's this, there, there are three parables about stewardship or managing that I've preached and, and, and thought about and meditated on so much. And, and I'll get to why the, the, both of them, or, or um, the, the two, there's two very similar, and then why, why it bothered me, and I'll explain it to you. So let's, but let's first look at the parable of the minnows. Fine, the king exclaimed, 
You are a good man. You've been faithful for little with the little I entrusted you. And as a reward, you will be governor of 10 cities. So what is, what is the principle that God sets out there? He says, if you're faithful in little, I will give you much. Again and again, if you're faithful with little, I will give you much. So um, the bottom line is, is that we need to understand that God wants to see that we're trustworthy before he gives us any more. And you understand that, and I've mentioned this before, but a lot of you have retirement annuities. If your fund manager isn't doing a good job, you won't give him more money. You'll give it to someone else. God put you here to bring growth, to fulfill his kingdom, and we need to understand, and this is the principle in both the parable of the talents and, and of the... Um, and the, the principle of the, the parable of the, the minas is that little leads to much. If you do well with little, you, you end up with much. But this was the part that really bothered me, and I'm going to read it to you, because there was a third, in each of both of those parables, there was a third servant, and that third servant was not faithful. In fact, in both cases, he buried his talent or his minna. And, and um, it says in Luke um, 19, verse 22 to 23, you vile and wicked slave, the king ro roared, uh, hard am I, that's exactly how I'll be f towards you. If you knew so much about me and how tough I am, then why didn't you deposit the money in the bank so that I could at least get some interest on it? You see, what made the, the, the master angry was the total refusal of the servant to manage the assets he had given him. Because he, his attitude was, I am not going to fulfill my management role in any way. In any way am, am I... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fulfill my management role. I am going to, I'm not going to do what you've called me to. I'm not going to do what you expect of me. And the reason that, that the, the master who represents God became so angry is because he, that man was made to manage. That was the role God gave him. The reason he, God was angry with him, the, the father, which is the was because the man refused to manage. He said, if you just put it in the bank, at least that's some management. God expects you to manage the resources he's given you. It's a, and, and this is a principle that Jesus taught his disciples so that we could know what God gives you, you have to manage. If you refuse to do that, God will be angry with you because you're not fulfilling what he made you to be. Another, another interesting parable, one that I've battled with even more, is um, in Luke's um, 16, verse um, 8 to 12. And it says, The rich man had to admire the rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the citizens of this world are more clever in dishonesty than the godly are. But shall I tell you to act that way, to buy friendship through cheating? Will this ensure your entry into everlasting home in heaven. No, for unless you are honest in small matters, you will, won't be in large ones. If you cheat even a small, even a little, you won't be honest and greater, uh, with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, you will, you will trust, sorry, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's money, why should you be entrusted with money of your own? Now, I, I always wondered why Jesus told this parable and why he commended the steward, the, the, the dishonest steward. Now, he's very clear that the steward is going to go on to his reward. But why he was commending this man is because he was managing the resources that he had to achieve a specific goal a goal to his benefit. 
So although he was, ev- he was evil and will eventually end up in the hellfires, Jesus was saying the ungodly are better at managing their resources and, under- and fulfilling the role of management than the Christians are. You see, we need to be purposeful about managing the resources that God has given us. The ungodly are very purposeful. You drive a you go down to the resorts and you see the immense wealth, the massive second homes. And not all of those people are ungodly, incidentally, but many of them are. You see, you go to Dubai and you see the immense city there and all the supercars. Many of those people are ungodly. But they fulfill, they, they're employing the spiritual principle that, we need, that they need to manage their resources for a goal. And God likes that because even though it's for a wrong goal, at least they're fulfilling the purpose for which they're made. Yes, they're not doing it for his sake and for his kingdom, but they're doing it, and we as Christians are not purposeful about our resources, about the friends, about the family, about the money, about the the possessions, about the roles that we've given. We don't take our role as managers as seriously as we should. And this is what this parable is about. He's saying, Jesus is saying, take your role as a manager seriously. This ungodly do, why don't you? So I want to set out a few principles for you. When you are chaotic, you repel resources. When you organize your life, you attract them. Another one, if you faithfully manage the little you have, God will give you more. Another one, if you faithfully manage your time, God will give you people to manage. If you cannot manage your time, God will not put you in charge of anyone. Why? Because you are unfaithful with your time. You're not managing your time. If you manage your time well and make your life productive, he will give you more people to manage. If you're wondering why you're not getting that management job, you have to ask yourself, are you managing the time that you've been given? Another one, if you faithfully manage your single life, God will give you a partner to share it with you. For instance, and I'm going to give you two examples, Pastor Matthew came to me and said, you know, I'm so happy with being single. Within three weeks, or however long, Matthew, it wasn't long, he found Helena. So I found the girl. 21. 21. Okay. Another, Another example is is the reason I invited my wife is, uh, out for a date is I understood that, she, that there was another guy. And my father found her buying a book, God's, Lie, uh, God's Call to the Single. <laughs> and so I invited her out. I knew she was single. The point is, is that a lot of you are saying, God, where's my partner? Where's my partner? But are you using your life productively? Why would God... Y- give you someone else if you can't manage the life that he's given you. You see, if marriage is a partnership. Some of you are happily single, have no intention of remarrying. I get that. But if you are looking for a partner and spend all your time thinking about that, God will not give you someone else because you, or you'll, you'll find the wrong person. Why? Because you aren't managing your singleness properly. And if, as you do that, as you become productive, as you build your relationship with him, he will then think, yeah, it's time. Why? Because you're using your, the resource, your life, productively for a purpose, for his kingdom. Another one is, if, you're, if you faithfully manage God's call on your life, he will give you more. I'm a prime example of that, is I I am more surprised, uh, R- Richard, uh, 21-year-old Richard, or 20-year-old, or 17-year-old Richard is more surprised than all of you that I'm standing here. I was, I'm utterly shocked. But do you know what? I have a heart for the kingdom of God. And the little bit he gave me, I used 
the little bit he, 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 he gave me, I put to practice and he just kept promoting me. And I didn't look to be promoted, but God promoted me because the, the anointing he gave me I used. The, the revelation he gave me I used. The time he gave me I used. I'm not saying you have to become a senior pastor, but if you want to be used by the Lord, use your time for his kingdom. As an example, when I was on the bones of my butt, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that in the church service, but I was at, they offered me a job to teach on a Wednesday night, teach law. And I turned it down because I was running, because I'd left youth, and within three months I had four, two connect groups, or within six months four connect groups running on a Wednesday night, and I wasn't prepared to do that. I wasn't prepared to give that up. And, and so they offered me an alternate job, thankfully, because I really needed the money at the time. But the bottom line was, was that I run almost 200 connect groups with um, others around the country. And the reason why is because I was determined to manage those small groups. I understood the importance of small groups. And I used my time to do that. And God has promoted me and promoted me because I've devoted my life to small groups. And I believe in them so much. So I want to tell you that these principles work. Another one is, can you handle other people's money? Then God will give you your own to manage. If you're working in a job and you're not looking after your boss's money, why would you be promoted? Why would he give you your own money? Why would he free you up in your own business? A lot of people are wanting to get into your own business. And there's, let me tell you, it's hard work in your own business. A lot of you know that. But the bottom line is, is if you aren't looking after your boss's money, why would God promote you? Why would God give you people to manage if you can't manage your own time? It's not the request, it's the management that God watches. In fact, I would say that if you use your resources properly, that, that's, God is more worried about that then pray. A lot of you have been praying for years for something, but you don't manage your resources. I know of someone who was praying for 17 years for something, a pastor, for a, for a building. During lockdown, he started to really operate connect groups and, and use his gifting, and God gave him a, a building that he could rent, a good building. If you use your resources, then God is going to you pray and pray, and you wonder why your prayers aren't answered. God cares about, are you fulfilling the purpose for which you were made? Another one is, what does God want us to manage for him? And this is important. So why, what, is God ultimately made, what has God ultimately made you to manage? And the scripture is this, or, or this, God put Adam in a garden, and he said, multiply this until the whole earth looks like the garden. God likes garden, not bush. You see, he wants to partner with us to take his creation, to take what he's given us and make it more. You, we, one of the reasons why you haven't seen the success in your life is that you weren't willing to partner with God. You thought God had to do everything. Yes, God wants to help you. Yes, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. But unless you ask the Holy Spirit what to do and start to do it, God is not going to promote you. Another one is, we ask, so, sorry, pardon me, this is the scripture. What did Jesus tell us to pray? We ask that your kingdom will come now. Make your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. We need to pray, and we need to ask God to help us to bring his will here on earth just as it is in heaven. God's goal for us was the extension of heaven's culture on earth. So in your work, in the church, in your family, in your school, in your university, wherever you're studying, among your friends, what is your goal 
Your goal is to manage that situation to bring heaven's culture here on earth. The reason we have heaven's, the reason that God wants us to, to, to or has put us here, is to bring heaven's culture here on earth. And I'm going to be speaking about it next week. Please don't miss next week. But I want you to understand that God's goal, God's purpose, the reason you were created, the reason you're not seeing your prayers, and the reason why you're seeing, not seeing your prayer requests answered is because you're not doing this. You're not working towards seeing heaven's culture come into every situation in your life. Now, heaven is an orderly place, and we know that because John went and he took photos and he, de- and he looked everywhere, and he described in Revelation what heaven looked like, and everything was in perfect order. God wants you to, God made you to bring his kingdom, his perfect order here on earth, in your situation, in your family, in your home right now. In your school, when it finally opens up. In your business. Among your friends, if you ever see them again. I'm joking, you will. Trust me. The bottom line is, is that God wants you to use what he's given you to manage it, to bring his culture here on earth. So make earth just like heaven. That's why God made you. God loves order according to the will of God. He wants you to bring order in your situation where you are. And so I'm going to give you six takeaways from this message. First of all, management is the primary role of mankind. Whatever you fail to manage, you will lose. And I've noticed that. For instance, although I've lost fat, I've also lost lots of muscle because of covid And a few other reasons, I've been lying on the couch until recently. I had to lie on the couch for three weeks because I was so I was sick. I was coughing my lungs out. My muscles went away because I wasn't managing them. Not that I was a bodybuilder. All I'm saying is, is that I could see the effect of not managing my body on me. So and that's the easiest way to understand this. If you, don't lift, if you don't lift stuff, your muscles disappear. God's primary measure for trusting you is management. So he looks at you and he says, how are you managing your time, your life, your money? And he says, okay, I can give you more. God will give to whoever effectively manages. Management attracts resources. And God will not give you what you pray for, only what you can manage. This is powerful stuff. The reason I'm preaching this is because I believe that there can be a move of God in 2021. But if we back down, if we live in fear, if we are, are fearful, if we don't take 2021 head on, we will not see the move of the Holy Spirit that's possible here in our, in our city, in our country, in our continent, and in our world. I want to challenge you that God wants to use you much more than you think he does. And I want to pray for you for wisdom to understand how to manage your resources effectively because God wants to use you. Father, I come before you with everybody that's watching this and receiving this and even the few in the building. And I pray, Father, that you're going to give them wisdom as to how to manage what you've given them. I pray, Lord, that we will repent of stuff that we've done or, the, or things that we've not understood and, and um, management that we haven't done. Help us to become effective managers of the resources you've given us so that we can see the move of God. I pray, Father God, that we will steward your anointing that you've given us, the the resources, the money, the assets, the time, the relationships effectively to bring your kingdom to come. Give us those resources. Help us to stop the bad habits and help us to give us good habits in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. I trust that this has spoken to you. I really believe that if you understand this principle, you're going to see transformation in your life, that you're going to bring it into our church, into our city, into our country, into our continent, and into the world. Bless you, and thank you for listening. Over to the studio. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Richard. That was very insightful. Mm. Um, we so often are focused on the things that we would like to have in life, the mm. things that we are lacking, and we are praying for those things. But I'm reminded of um, my husband, Rian, always says, just do the right thing today. Sure. Just mm. manage today the way you should manage it, and sure. the future God will look after. So yeah. that, was, that was very insightful. Thank you, Pastor Richard. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, I think it's, it's, it's very practical and it's so true, you know, when you, I love that scripture Richard used, which said, you know, be faithful with the little and you'll be made faithful yes. with much. Yes. And, you know, don't compare yourself with anybody else. You know, you look at that parable about the, 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 the manager who, who gave his finances, he gave the one talent, he gave the two talents and the five talents. Mm -hmm. Don't compare yourself with the person with the five talents. So in other words, if you're only managing so much, don't think you less because there's somebody else more just manage what you've got yes. and work with that which you've got you don't have to be the same as everybody else but manage with what you've got and i think it's a powerful word for this year as Amen. well especially those working with their own businesses and that you know god wants to bless it but as we manage it god's going to really bless that amen yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. amen you know what i like was what before pastor richard started speaking he said um 21 2021 uh, year come and um, before I went to Cape Town I put on my seatbelt look at my uncle and said okay Alan are you ready he said yes and I said and I said Cape Town here I come and I think you know what this word is so profound that Pastor Richard spoke you know what it, for me it was um, it was inspir inspiring encouraging but yet also challenging so I want to encourage everybody you know what put on your spiritual seatbelt because this is going to be an amazing year Absolutely. Amen. And Michaela, just before we go back to the worship song, we want to pray for all of you. Um, this is already started out. This year started out. You might be wondering, how do I plan this year? I like what Cindy just said. Now it's true. Just each day, place Amen. each day, work Amen. each day as with whatever you've got in your hands. Be faithful with that in the day. Mm. And Michaela, I don't know if you want to just send an encouraging message to our young people. Mm. Our young people, our students, our youth couldn't wait to get back to school. And yeah. unfortunately, heard the news this week that it's been delayed again. Okay. And I know that all the students were looking forward to it. Anything encouraging you want to say to our young yeah, people definitely. right now? Yeah, um, definitely. You know, it, I think it's just important to remember that God will go before you this year. Mm. I think that's, that's such an important thing to cling on to. Know that God will go before you and that... Yes. Although the year started like this, it's not, it's not the, it doesn't determine how this year will end. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for, for the parents and for young people, know that God has got this in control and He will go before you. That you guys will push through. You've done it last year yes. and last year was Amen. so much worse than what this year was. Yes. But despite that, God still came through for us in many ways. There were of so course. many testimonies from our youth. We've gotten new people saved. We've, people have... Um, grown closer to Jesus than they ever had in last year, despite what was going on. So this year, let's push further. Let's go further with God. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you guys that you will get through this year, mm -hmm. that it will be the best year yet for you. Even matriculants. I know my sister starting high school this year. So for wow. her, it was like a, because uh, mm. you can't start it the way you'd like to. Yeah. Mm. But we have to just remember that we make the most of the best. So we will Amen. still dress her up yes. for school at home. Or whatever it is, let's make it fun <laughs> yes. for them. Yeah. Yes. So for the young people, you guys got this. We believe in you and know that Jesus will be with you. Mm -hmm. in yeah. mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want to encourage everyone out there, you know, what Pastor Richard just said now about, you know, as you give your time to the Lord, mm -hmm. things supernaturally yeah. grow. Yeah. I've yeah. seen that in my family. I've seen that in my life. Yes. I'll never forget when I was a matriculant. I decided, I still remember Desmond had a meeting with me and my parents and my parent or my father at least at the time he, he spoke to pastor desmond and marion lita and said my son will not be involved in church activities mm -hmm. in his matric year. and unfortunately because of that i had to obey my father i had to pull out but do you know that my marks actually dropped 
my marks dropped to such a point that my father even he completely forgotten and i remember for, and plus i was bored and i didn't want to just focus on schoolwork. and i actually went back to pastor des and i said des i want to come back on friday nights man because i used to help desmond at the time with white jam i was a i was a connect leader from the age of 14 and i went back and do you know that i finished my trick involved in church still involved in the youth in children's sunday morning i was at children's church leading friday nights we were leading praise and worship running our oh, saturday nights at the time running connect groups and you know that year i finished off matric with the highest marks i'd ever attained praise in the God. whole of high school yeah. being involved you see when you give your time to the lord when you give your time to sowing in god's kingdom and your money it just supernaturally is blessed and is it grows right. so we just want i want us right now let's just stretch out our hands towards these people and just i want you to take hold of just imagine yourself holding the plans god has for you this year yeah. but, and also take your hands and as you i want you to imagine what god has given you to manage what yeah. god has given you to look after what god has given you to be fruitful with and multiply i want you to imagine yourself holding it in your hands and we're going to declare that blessing the, the lord promised us when he created us he said go out be fruitful and multiply and so right now father in the name of Jesus as each and every one of us is holding the plans you have for us in our hands Lord first of all we give you the glory we thank you father we praise you for everything you've given us to run with to take a hold of to be faithful with father and I just thank you right now that each and every person right now that's watching this do not give up do not let go do do not give up don't drop the baton but keep going keep being faithful and father right now as each and every person watching this continues to be faithful with the plans you have for them lord i just i declare the blessing of the lord and the word of the lord over it it will be fruitful and multiply Amen. and grow and grow and grow and grow. That every one of those seeds and areas of your life that have been struggling to grow will sprout and be will be fruitful and multiply right now in the precious, mighty name of Jesus. And every student, every parent of youngsters that is watching this right now, I declare now that your children will be successful. They will pass. They will get to the other side. And they will be a success. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Don't worry about the curriculum, when it's going to start, what's going to happen when they're off. Thus said the Lord, they're going to do better than you imagined or you thought or dreamed of in this year in Jesus' mighty name. And I declare that over our children. I declare that over our youth. And I come against right now. I just come against the spirit of depression and suicidal thoughts that's trying to grip our young people this time. Hallelujah. They will rise up and I prophesy that this this generation this young generation is going to start a revolution and a revival like we've never ever seen before i speak it over you young people today in jesus mighty name and we're going to just go over to the worship team right now as they just play out one more worship song amen, amen. See things like you do, but I look 
Thanks everyone for joining us today. And please continue to share. You can still share this um, this message, the service we've just had. So please keep sharing and sharing. Let's get this word out there. And especially as people can't come to church, you know, as someone said earlier, it's such a blessing that we're using the resources that we can to still have church. So thanks for joining us. And I want to thank Cindy, Desmond, and Michaela. It's a pleasure. Well done, Desmond, your first time. Thank you. Thoroughly enjoyed it, being amongst you guys here. Really enjoyed it very much. Cool. And Michaela, you and I are going to be messaging each other later yes. when Man United beat Liverpool. Yes, Amen. definitely. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool beat Man United, you mean? We'll message each other when Liverpool beat uh, I think I'm on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> we enjoyed the day, although no, no. We'll, we won't be watching because we at 7 p.m. Yes, we're we'll be watching. watching the match. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be watching. We're watching the match with the corner of our eye. But 7 p.m. we'll see you later for the Connect Outline team. And then obviously Tuesday evening with Pastor James. That's going to be interesting. He's going to be speaking about deliverance. Man, he's got some testimonies, some stories you don't want to miss. I'm actually looking forward to interviewing him. It's going to be very, very interesting. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming on.